Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create and animate your own custom characters in Photoshop and Fuse. Rightio, so let's get started. So if you've ever wanted to create and animate your own custom characters, you can now do that in Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Fuse. So Adobe Fuse is, I think it's still in beta, but essentially it's an app that enables you to create your own characters. You can download it with an Adobe subscription now, if you like, for free. And you can create your own character, adjust all these different properties, parameters, save that to your CC library, and then bring it into Photoshop. And what you can do in Photoshop is bring that character in you can adjust the lighting the position the angle you can even change the expression on their face or like for example their pose or get them to perform a certain animation there's like a hundred or so different animations maybe more and you can then scrub through that animation on a timeline and once you find the perfect point in that animation you could then render that for example and then add it into something like a photoshop composite so super cool and if you've been following the january creative composite challenge then stick around to the end of the video because i will be announcing the winner firstly a huge thank you to everyone who entered it's been incredibly inspiring and humbling to see all these amazing pieces of work but alas there had to be only one winner and I'll be announcing those at the end of the video. So anyway, without further ado, let's jump to the screen and we'll just get started. Okay, so I'm now in Photoshop. I just wanted to show you an example. I did show this briefly on the stream yesterday. This is a Resident Evil 2 inspired composite that I'm working on at the moment. It's not quite finished, but I just wanted to demonstrate how you can use this. So we have the police officer here, Leon Kennedy. This 3D model is has been heavily modified, especially the face, which is actually a screenshot from the game, kind of superimposed on there. Still needs a bit more work, but the body, the pose, the clothing, everything, the, the badge, all this stuff, this was created as a 3D model and then brought into Photoshop. Same here for the zombies. We've got one here. We've got another one here, currently being shot in the face. Then we've got this one down here. These were all created in Adobe Fuse as 3D models and then brought into Photoshop, and then I animated them, got the right poses, adjusted the lighting, the rotation, put them in these particular poses, and essentially composed this shot. So that's an example I just wanted to briefly show you. Now, if I switch over to the tutorial document that I've prepared, this is just a new document, 1920 by 1080 pixels in size, and I've added an image, and we're going to create something in Adobe Fuse now, and then drop this into this image, and I'm gonna show you how it works. So if we switch over to Fuse, so this is typically what you see when you start up Fuse and we've got some various tools over here. And if I just create my character first and I'll show you a little bit about how they work. So the main four categories, we've got assemble where we essentially build the pieces of our character. We can then customize those pieces. So the, the body parts, the head, torso, legs and the arms. We can add any clothing and then we can change the texture or the materials and the colors of that clothing. So first of all, let's go and create, I always like the tunes, so let's create a tune. They're really funny. They've got a real character to them. So we'll add a head, and then it automatically goes to the next section. So you can pick any different body. I'm just gonna go for the corresponding body. So it's the female tune teen A. So all these pieces are meant to go together, but I suppose you could mix and match depending on what you wanted to go for. We could add like a male zombie torso, for example. <laughs> there we go. Let's, uh, let's undo that one. Okay, brilliant. So we've got this tool here. We can move around and it literally does that. You can use the scrolly wheel on your mouse if you've got one or maybe the trackpad. Let's just check. Yeah, that works as well. So we can zoom in and out. We can click this one to rotate around our subject. Woo, there we go. And we've got this one here that just recenters them back. And then this arrow here, we can select different items, different body parts. And that enables us to make adjustments. So you can't see what I'm doing here. But if I just zoom in, so I can click and drag and just move this around freely. So you can see I uh, extended the nose there and you can get quite creative with this. So we've got our character's main body parts. Let's just move 
this around and back out so we can recenter that like so. And we can start customizing. So you can see we have all the different body parts here. So we could go to the face, for example, change the expression. So we'll go with like a really, really cocky expression. Uh, we could go to the arms. I'm just gonna change these at random. You can spend a lot longer making your character super unique. Oh, wow, massive hands. There we go, giant hands, teeth. You can even go and adjust all these crazy details of the teeth, which is incredibly useful when doing a zombie. There we go. Let's get those glutes on the go. <laughs> you can really distort this in uh, some very, whoa, what did I just do there? Oh, torso. Okay, we're gonna make you really, really long. So you can really have a lot of fun with this, or you could create something, I suppose, a little bit tr more tr true to life. <laughs> oh, what have I done? What have I done? And you can actually randomize certain parts of the body as well. So you can see you can click through, or you could just randomize the entire thing. I don't want to randomize everything. I feel like we've put a lot of work into this so far. And I don't want to, uh, I don't want to undo all that. So we've created our character with the giant hands, the rather long body and the cocky expression on her face. So then we're ready to go and add some clothes. And we've got some here. Now this has been in beta for a while, Adobe Fuse. I'd love to see somewhere where you could get more clothes and assets and hairstyles. Maybe that'll be something coming in the future. I'm not entirely sure, but this is what's available at the moment. So you can see we've got lots of things here. We've got the tactical response swap vest that you saw in my composite at the beginning and it fits the shape of the body as well which is really cool so i'll go through and just quickly add some clothes so we could we could add the matching swap thing but where's the fun in that let's add some workout shorts i mean i think we started off pretty crazy and creative so it's only fitting that we carry on that way firefighter boots we'll add like a ponytail um Add some fashionista glasses. There we go, it's all going on. Little uh, little goatee beard there, because just why not? Tactical gloves. Yeah, we need some tactical response gloves. We could add a gas mask as well. Maybe a, maybe a surgical mask. And of course, we're going to add an alpha trim mustache. Oh, not that you can see it under the... Uh, under the object anyway. In fact, if you want to remove any item, you can like simply select it and hit delete or backspace on the keyboard and it does then remove that piece of clothing. But I think we're pretty good there. We've created something incredibly unique. Now we can go over to texture and this is pretty cool. So what we can do is we can actually click on certain pieces and we could change the resolution. So some of them go up to 2048, some of them only go up to 1024, but essentially you can increase the quality, the resolution of this particular thing. So this is the face at the moment. So we could bump that up to 2048. You just get a bit more detail and a bit of a higher resolution on that particular thing. So the swapped tactical vest itself, you can see the default is 512, but we could crank that up if we wanted to. I always crank it up anyway for maximum quality, even if it does take a little bit longer to kind of render and things. And you can change various properties here. Lots of different drop downs where you can adjust the scale and any kind of dirt and detail, but you can also click on all these different parts. And down here, we get lots of different materials. So we could make this like a, a metal swap vest and you can see it, uh, it changes that, but then you've also got different parts. So we've got the elbow pads, so we could add a pattern. And you can see each time we add a pattern, we can then change the colors of those patterns and we get sliders for the patterns as well and things like creases, like the options here to fully customize your character, their clothing and the materials of that clothing is insane. It's like incredibly detailed. So you can, of course, spend as long as you like creating your character and then go to file and you can save, which is always a good idea because we spent so long creating this masterpiece. It's definitely worth saving and you can send it to Mixamo if you want. But what I typically do now is I save that to my CC library and it will take a moment to kind of process. I'll just show you that briefly. So you can give it a name, choose your CC library 
and then click save. So if I just go fuse and we'll go tutorial and then I can click save and it does its thing and it might take a little while and it exports that to your library. In fact, I'm not gonna sit here while it does that. So we'll just cancel that for now. Okay, there we go. So if I jump back to Photoshop now, what I'm gonna do is just use one that I've already created. So I'm gonna go over to my libraries panel here and it may take uh, a few minutes just to sync up to the server and then download that into your CC library. It should automatically sync, but if it doesn't, just restart Photoshop. And if you don't see your libraries panel, you can see I've got mine docked here. You can go up to window, down to libraries and it will pop up and you'll see the little syncing icon when it is syncing down here and you can see all my libraries are up to date. And I've got a few different characters that I've already created. So if I grab the soldier that I created and I can double click to create a new document or I can drag it into an existing document. So I've set this scene up. So we're just gonna pop this in here now. And they come in by default with a good old T pose. Now, if you've never used the 3D workspace, this can be a bit confusing at first, but it's really easy once you get used to it, I promise. So you can see at the top here, we've got all these different 3D mode tools. So we've got this one here which is orbit, so you can orbit the camera and you can see they're moving around on that 3D plane. Next along, we have roll. So we can do this, we can roll the camera. We can move as well, so we can move it around. This one I believe is slide. Yep, we can slide the 3D camera. And this one here is zoom. So we can zoom in and out. So using all of these different tools, you can rotate around your subject. So if we wanted to look at them from the reverse like this or from the top or from a lower angle, you can fully adjust that. Now you can also control all of this from down here really quickly as well. So you can hover over these different icons and just click and drag whilst hovering on that icon and it will immediately just let you use that function without the need to go and necessarily switch tools or anything. So these are kind of some like quick actions down here as well. There we go. And of course you can still zoom out or back in if you need to. So if I switch over to my layers panel now, you'll see it's added all of these different uh, textures and layers and things underneath my 3D object. You can see it's a 3D object because it has the little cube icon attached to it. And I can actually double click on all of these and it loads up like a flat mesh. So this is the mesh that wraps around the 3D object to create the clothing. So if I were to go and create a new layer and for example, grab a color and start just scribbling on this with the brush tool, or importing a graphic or a logo or something. And then if I just go to close this and select save, it will actually add that and then the lighting on top of it to the 3D model. Um, I didn't really want to do that, so I can double click to go back in there. It's on a separate layer that I can delete and then I can just save and exit again. So they work very much like smart objects, but if you want to add graphics text, designs or anything to the clothing, then it's definitely worth doing it through these different sub objects here. So he's still in the T pose at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is just flick through these tools for no apparent reason. So I'm gonna zoom out first of all so we can see him. Let's bring him back. We'll maybe zoom out a little bit more and rotate him correctly. There we go. And this plane is really helpful as well. This is going to really help me match him at the correct angle to the scene. So maybe something like this. And then I can bring him down and try and position him roughly where the subject was in the example I showed at the beginning. So if I switch back over to this, you can see he stood on the ground here and I was able to position him on the ground using these tools and this kind of helpful plain thing as well. So I'm just doing this very roughly now, but you can take a lot longer with yours just to make sure they're positioned correctly. So they're still using 
the default T pose. So while we have a layer selected that is a 3D layer in our layers panel, we get some extra options. So we can open up the 3D properties panel and you can access that by going to window and down to 3D. We've got lots of different categories here. Now, we can select the skeleton here. Mine's called top skeleton. Yours might have a different name. Essentially, it's the skeleton that houses all the different body parts. And you can turn these off and back on so you can see it. If you turn them off, it just resorts back to like a bare bones 3D model with no clothing or texturing applied or anything. But if we select the main skeleton, we can then go to the properties panel and we get some properties for that. So whichever of these elements we have selected here, we will get a unique set of properties that are related to that specific thing. So I've selected the skeleton, that is our subject here. And we now have a bunch of different poses and animations we can use. We can also change the facial expression. expression. So you can see if I just zoom in, we can change the expression to, let's go embarrassed. There we go, it looks a little bit embarrassed and we can increase the strength of that expression. And you can also do the expression in Adobe Fuse as well if you'd prefer to. But this one here, this lets us play a particular animation or pose. So we can click here on the cog and you can choose to filter these out by specific types of animations and poses. I've got animations only at the moment because I really want to show you how this works. And we can also go up to the menu icon and we can go large thumbnails as well and see a slightly larger thumbnail and I can hover over it and you can see the animation play out. MC rapping on the microphone. But we have a soldier here. This is someone I created earlier. So I think combat seems a bit more fitting. So we've got We've got a kick, a roundhouse kick. So we're gonna go with that one. Maybe? Yeah, let's go with the kick. So you can see it immediately changes the pose. Now, to go and view the animation for this, we need to go to window and down to timeline, make sure this is switched on. And if I just bring this down, just so it's not so dominant on my screen, there we go. I can now scrub through this. You can see, look at this, all these shadows, this lighting and everything just adapts. Oh, they're amazing. Okay, so we're gonna have him like leg right up like that. And then what I can do is with the 3D layer selected, and the main selection tool, I can grab one of these 3D tools and I can rotate him around until I get something I'm happy with. So this is so cool. So I can literally take my subject and match him to my scene. And then I can scrub back through this, maybe just about to kick, so something like that. And then of course I can go and rotate that again. I think, I think you can search as well. There might be like a backflip or something. Oh, what is this? Aerial backflip to land. Oh, we are definitely using that one. I think he's flipped off the screen though. <laughs> Where's he gone? Oh no, what have I done? He's literally jumped off the screen. All right, okay. We have to bring him back down. What is he doing? <laughs> what is this guy doing? Okay, All right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to scale this down a sec. There we go. Right, we've got this. Okay. So of course he's swinging in, he's doing a flip, and he's going through the floor. <laughs> so of course you can see that this will take a bit of work, but we could do something like that. And then I could rotate him around. So you get the general idea. There's a whole bunch of different poses and animations you can filter through and use to create your subject and animate them in a pose that looks much cooler than just that. So there we go. That's how you can do that anyway. Have a lot of fun with that.
And something else we can also do is we can click on infinite light here. This is the light source, or you can just quickly click on the little white circle with the light bulb icon on it, and we can adjust the lighting. So in this scene, you can see we have light coming through the windows. So I could do something like this. And with infinite light one selected, again, I can click on the properties panel and I get some contextual properties related to this particular thing. So I could turn the shadow off and back on. You can't really see that because of the position that he's in, but if he was standing here, for example, you would see a shadow being cast based on where the lighting is coming from. And you can adjust the softness of the shadow, the intensity of the light, so it could be a lot brighter. And you can even change the color of the light as well. So I could make this a little bit yellowy, give it like a kind of beigey cream tint to it, something like that. And then I can actually go down here back in the 3D panel and I can add a new light. And you've got other types of light here as well. So you can see it adds a second one. And I could maybe have this coming from up here in the top left of the image, lighting him from there a little bit. And I could maybe drop this down. So this is a much less intense light. Now, another way you can adjust the lighting is you can actually click on the environment. Then go to the properties panel. You get a whole bunch of different options here and you've got something called IBL. This stands for image based lighting. And to be honest, I don't fully understand this. I'm not like a 3D guy, but this is some kind of way of simulating light for a 3D scene. So that's probably not the best explanation, but the best advice I can give here is you can adjust the color for this. And you can see you get this texture here and it maps it around a 3D sphere. And so I'm not entirely sure what it does, but you can also deselect image-based lighting or IBL. And you can see the difference. So I found with this, you just get much kind of um, deeper, richer blacks and different tones to your image. In fact, that's what I used for this particular composite on all of these different subjects. So the three zombies and Leon, the police officer in the middle, I disabled IBL and it just made the lighting look so much better for this particular scene. So if anyone has a better description of what IBL image-based lighting is, then um, please do let me and everyone else know down below. But I just wanted to kind of mention that because it's something that I found quite useful. And you can see you can adjust the colors of shadows and reflections and the opacity. And there's so many different settings here. So definitely click through all of these different things and uh, go through. You can see more properties here for the scene. There's a ton of different things that you can do here. But I just really wanted to show you how you can use Fuse to generate characters, bring them into Photoshop, animate them and just start creating awesome things. It's something that's been incredibly useful to me as someone who loves creating composites. And the fact that I'm now able to create my own characters and put them into my scene and have them just exactly how I want them, that's pretty awesome. And so I kind of had to make a video sharing this. Okay, so I was actually just editing this video, nearly finished as well. And I suddenly realized I've missed out a pretty important thing from this tutorial. So I'm back and I'm gonna finish with one last bit of information, something that you absolutely must know once you've finished creating your subject and your lighting and you're completely done and you're ready to render it out. So let's jump back to the screen. You can see I've got my 3D object here. Something I do like to do is just duplicate this, click OK, and then what I'll do is I'll hide this in the document just so I keep a copy of this 3D object with all of those lighting settings and all that stuff if I do need to make any changes. And then what I'll do with this one here, with the copy, I'll go render 3D layer. Now I'm not gonna do this now because it will take quite a long time. It will depend on the power of your computer, but also a few different settings. But essentially, once it's gone through the process of rendering out all that lighting, it will look much, much better. You can see if I zoom in here, We've got lots of jagged edges and beautiful pixels. When you render it out, you will not see any of this. It will be super smooth and it will look fantastic. 
However, once you've rendered it out, if you do go and make any more changes to it or adjust the lighting and things, you will need to go and render it again. So what I do is once I've rendered it out, I then go and rasterize that 3D layer. And what it will do is it will essentially finalize that. You won't be able to make any more changes. So that's why the backup is quite good here. However, you will then be able to go and do a whole bunch of other things as well. So it's always worth just rasterizing it at the end. Once you finish, you've got that backup if you need it, and then you can go and work on this rasterized layer. And there's a few Photoshop settings that are definitely worth mentioning as well, just in case you want to make some adjustments to the output of your 3D graphic. So back in Photoshop, let's go up to Photoshop CC here on the Mac. If you're on Windows, it will be under Edit. Essentially, we're looking for Preferences. So let's go to Preferences. And from the tab on the left, we want the 3D Preferences. And you can see we've got lots of 3D related preferences here. So things like shadow quality, high quality threshold. I find that around five or six is pretty good to get a decent result. You can, of course, crank this up if you like. Render tile size, you can have huge if you really want to. Now, as you adjust these settings, they will, of course, adjust the quality of the render end result. However, it will adjust the render time significantly. So depending on the power that you're packing in your computer, you may actually be looking at um, a few minutes to a few hours. Uh, I don't think it'll take days, but it will take a lot longer if you start cranking up all of these settings. But it's definitely worth messing around with and trying to find a balance of quality versus acceptable render times for you and the project you're working on. Anyway, I just had to mention that now back to the rest of the video. And there we go. So those are a few ways that you can create unique characters in Adobe Fuse bring them into Photoshop, you can add them to a scene, adjust the lighting, the rotation, you can add poses and animations. And essentially, this is something that I've started using a lot more recently to create my own scenes. I find it awesome and I had to share this with you guys. And lastly, before I go, I'm going to announce the winner of the Creative Composite Challenge. This is the first competition that we've done here on the channel. The brief was to come up with a composite created in something like Photoshop and it was all themed around imagining the future. And there were around 67 different entries and a huge thank you to everyone who entered the competition. It's like, it's both humbling, but also super inspiring, just seeing how much creativity you guys put on display, like amazing. But of course, there can only be one winner. And honestly, it was the hardest part was narrowing all of these submissions down to one winner, but the winner of the creative composite challenge and the winner of <laughs> but the winner of the creative composite challenge and this Wacom pen tablet here is this piece of work right here. Now this is by Photoshop Bird, and to me, this was a perfect encapsulation of imagining the future with the subject looking out over the shot. The attention to detail with the lighting and the shadow on the subject, all these little details, and it had like a beautiful kind of symmetry and balance to it. And I love the way that you could see the original image also as part of the Instagram post and the way that they had transformed it into the final piece. So there we go, Photoshop Bird, you are the winner of the Creative Composite Challenge. I'm gonna message you directly on Instagram. I'll reach out to you and then we can figure out how to get this tablet sent out to you. And thank you again to everyone who entered the competition. It was awesome for me to kind of see all your work and your creativity and review it on the stream. And hopefully you had fun doing it as well. But there we go. That wraps up everything for this video and the Creative Composite Challenge. I'm sure we're gonna do many more soon. It's a bit of fun for everyone. So if you do have any other questions or comments, please do drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. You're a rebel.